this is Dina. Welcome to my channel. I am going to work today on a project using the Pink Meadows Collection Kit from Fancy Pants Designs. And y'all, don't forget, I do have a coupon code if you are interested in this beautiful collection. I did share this on Sunday night, um, that this was received to me from Brooke at Fancy Pants Designs. Thank you so much, Brooke. I appreciate it, and I'm excited to be able to cut into this beautiful paper today. And I'm going to make a 5x5 five five mini album out of it. I think that the paper is just too gorgeous not to turn it into a mini album. So let's just get going. Um, don't forget, I'll leave all the information um, down below regarding the paper collection and the coupon code that gives you 10% off of your order. And it's Crafty Crafts 10. So anyway, um, let's just get going, y'all. Okay, so the first thing I did, I've already cut my chipboard and so forth. I've already added tape on here, but I am using a piece of, um, this is 65 pound cardstock. I've gone ahead and cut it. It is seven inches in height and I joined two pieces of eight and a half by 11. You can see that together. I've scored at one inch on this end and one inch on the bottom and I do that. So it gives me a guide of lining up my um, chipboard. Now the chipboard, of course, I've cut two pieces five by five and one piece two by five. And I've already gone ahead and put put tape on here and I'm using score tape in law. Y'all, when I went to the Scrapbook Expo, I found the two inch score tape. This is a game changer. You're gonna use a lot less tape on this kind of project if you have it wider. So all I had to do for this is put two pieces on the top and bottom, one on top and bottom, and this two by five spine, I only had to put one piece right down the middle and it is perfect. Usually you're having to line up more and more tape. So the larger, wider score tape is a super game changer. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get going on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get these pulled off. And I'm gonna, I'm going to just, I like to kind of, kind of pinch up my edges here, and I like to make sure that I'm getting the bottom lined up the best that I can. To me, it's a little more important to get that bottom lined up than the end, but because I can always adjust myself here, I want to make sure that I'm lining this one up the best I can. So there we go. That one went on. See, less tape to have to pull off or paper off of your tape. Such a game changer, y'all. I'm sure you could probably find some on Amazon. Amazon sells everything. Okay, I'm going to leave about an eighth of an inch gap in between there. And then I'm going to add my other one to see how fast this went. Super fast. Now, I'm just using basic white cardstock 65 pound for, and I probably got it at Michael's. I get almost all my paper at Michael's when it comes to all my solid cardstock. But what is the most exciting part is adding the beautiful designer paper that I'm going to be using. So, I'm gonna get this lined up the best that I can. And now, of course, I have too much over here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cut it off. So just leave yourself an inch or so. I think this is a little bit more than an inch, but it's all good. So now, as you see, you've got your you've got the chipboard on here, and now all we're gonna do is we're gonna add some tape going around, we're gonna miter our corners, and then we're gonna finish up just getting the base of this going. Okay, so I have already got my score tape on. I put some tape going around the center and around the edges. I went ahead and mitered all of my corners just to save time. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start peeling off my tape or my paper off my tape. And I'm just going to get this adhered together. And I added this tape along here and I put this one a little bit closer to the out and the outside. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna peel the paper off the top and I'm gonna finish off all the sides. Now I like to just take it like this, kind of fold it and I fold mine over. And 
ends. And I'm just gonna, if you have any edges, just poke them in and just pull it over. And the same thing here. It is so hard to decide it, with this beautiful paper, which one I'm gonna put on the front. That's always the toughie because you wanna showcase the most beautiful piece to you. You know, and that's the hard part. This beautiful, beautiful paper collection. Okay, so you want to work your pages. These are folding in beautifully, and everything is looking good. Okay, so let's quickly make some hinges for this. Um, I think that um, we're probably going to do some basic just four hinges so we can have four pages, four signatures, I guess you could say, and then we'll work on putting our decorative paper. Okay, so for my hinges, I've cut myself a piece of paper four and a half inches in height. Since my album is a five by five, that's why I went four and a half. And I just have it the length of my paper, which is 11, so four and a half by 11. I'm gonna start and I'm gonna score at one and a half inches, okay? That'll be the beginning of my hinges. I'm gonna do half inch hinges, so I'm gonna go over a half an inch, go over another half an inch. So you're gonna have one and a half to two, two and a half, and I'm gonna do three eighths of an inch in between just to give it a little bit more space. So the easiest way to do that is to count over three lines. One, two, three. So on that third line, that's that three eighths of an inch, okay? And then you're gonna do a half an inch. Now, if it's hard for you to figure out exactly where to do it, move it over to the next normal inch, and then do half inch, and another half inch, and then do three eighths, one, two, three. But then you might be able to move it back, and yes, that is actually on four and a quarter. Okay, so let's just kind of recap where we are so far. One and a half to two, two and a half, and then go over to three eighths, so that would make it two and seven eighths. Go over a half an inch, it's gonna make it three and three eighths, and then three and seven eighths, and then you're gonna go over three eighths of an inch, so we're at four and a quarter. Now we're gonna do five, or four and a half, and then we're gonna, I'm sorry, four and three fourths, and then five and a quarter. So we have one hinge space, two inch hinge space, three hinge, now we're gonna go over three eighths of an inch, one, two, three, and now you're gonna do a half an inch. So I'm gonna move it over where I can see my half, and I'll tell you exactly what the dimensions. So I'm gonna move it back. That kind of helped me be able to make sure I got it exactly my way my um, dimensions that I wanted to do. So now it's at five and five eighths, and then it goes to six and one eighth, and then six and five eighths. So that's all you're gonna need. So there you go. Okay, now that I've got all my score lines, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna line it up, my last score line at a one and a half and I'm gonna cut that off so it's even on each end. So you ended up with needing a piece of paper that is eight, approximately eight inches. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna form your hinges and if you've seen my videos before, I do it the same way every time. So I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna start folding on my score lines like this. So this would make one hinge right here. If you're new to this, just follow the process, it's easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add my tape on the first hinge. So then you can go ahead and you can peel that off and you're gonna take it and you're gonna fold it forward where your tape adheres to the next hinge and that's how we make our first hinge. Okay, you're gonna skip over the gusset and you're gonna add tape on the next one. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add all the rest of my tape. So I'm gonna skip this one, skip this one, and then on the third one from that, I'm gonna go ahead and add my tape. 
I'm going to skip two, and then I'm going to add my tape on that third one again. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to peel this off, and I'm going to take it and fold it forward where my gusset is formed. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Peel this off. And you're going to make sure you, that's your gusset. So now where your tape is, you're going to just kind of, you can fold it down, fold it back. You're going to create that next gusset right there, or that next hinge right there. Okay? And then do the last one. Same way. You can fold it forward. You can fold it whichever is the best way for you. Okay, so now that you've got this, I'm going to take it and I'm going to kind of fold my hinges back and forth, just like this. Okay, now, so now I've got my hinges, making sure that they're nice and taped together. Now, before I go any further, and there's sometimes that I forget this step, and this is what I like to do. I like to take it, and it's easier to do this whenever you don't have it adhered to your book, but I like to take it at the edge of my hinge where that fold is and just bring it up just like that. And I'm gonna do that on all of them. That way my page fits down in there much nicer. You don't have to do this, I just find it easier. And they don't have to be perfectly even, just as long as you're getting the edge trimmed off, okay? And then, there we go, and there we go. Those papers, they flew that way. Okay, so now I've got it where my hinge is ready to go. We're gonna install it in our book now. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna add my tape to the back. I'm gonna make sure this all gets pressed down as nicely as I can get it. I want to try to make sure they're as even as I can get them. Nothing is perfect. Okay. So that's it. So now I'm going to add some tape. I'm going to grab my big O2 inch. This I'm going to have to use less. Okay. So now we're going to get this adhered into our into our, the base of our book. So I'm going to peel this off. And for this part, I like to add some art glitter glue on here. Number one, it makes it a little bit more stable. And also, it gives you a little wiggle room in case you need to move it around. Okay, I'm going to, what I'm going to do for this particular video, so it's not too long, because making a video like this and making an album is time consuming. Um, I'm just going to show you how I construct the base of the album and then all the decorating and epi and all that. I will be adding that off camera. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I want to center this. I want to center this about in the center here. Let's see how that looks. And you want to see, do you have it approximately even? You can kind of see where your hinges are. And there we go. So I'm going to add all these down. And get it pressed down. So there we go. Now our hinges are all in the book. Now I, I could have went ahead and added my tape on there, but I'll do that in a second. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to determine what I want on my outside and inside, and I'm going to work on my pages, okay? So work these like this so they'll move nicely. And you can also kind of take it and you're going to kind of fold gently where, you're, where the folds of your book is. There you go, that looks really good. I used to struggle with um, 
with my my edges cracking and since I kind of learned a little better to give myself a little bit more space um, in between where I put my chipboard it kind of helped so and you just be really gentle and then work your work your album okay so I'm gonna start I'm gonna work on getting my pages together and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna also add um, my decorative paper I think I'm going to start on the outside and let me determine what I want to use out of this beautiful collection, what I want to use on the front. And I'm really thinking that it might have to be one of these because you just can't let the big flowers go. They're just simply gorgeous. Love the heart. And I love, love, love this one too. This one is just really super beautiful. I think so it might be, and this one is gorgeous too. I love it, I love it. But I really think I wanna showcase this one on the front. So let me get all my cutting done and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm gonna work on the outside first and I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and use the beautiful paper that's got the big gigantic flowers on the front. I think these are simply gorgeous. They kind of remind me of piano, piano, piano wheeze. How do I say that? Peonies, peonies. I think that's what they, that's what they look like to me. Let me know if what you think they are, or if they're just a beautiful rose. <laughs> um, I've gone ahead and I've also layered it up and I've layered it up on some gold. I've added some tape on the back to save time. And I'm gonna do one for the front, one for the back. Now this is the other side of this paper, so I'm gonna use this on the spine. And as you see, I layered it up on some gold and I added some tape on the back. Now I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do an enclosure for this one just so all my goodies just stay in. And I'm gonna use some seam binding. My seam binding does come from myscrapcabinshop.com. Uh, no, my scrap my scrap cabin shop on Etsy. I'll get that out one of these days. Okay, so I'm just gonna measure, see how much I'm gonna need. Well, we're getting some good old rain. Good, good, good rain. Okay, I'm just gonna cut, and I think I'll do two colors. I've got this one as a little bit more, almost like a rose gold. It really matches the color really nicely. Find an end here. I'm gonna put these together and just kind of make them as even as I can so I know how much I need. Move those over to the side. Now for these, I'm gonna just layer it underneath the tops of my underneath and then I'll put the top, the top paper or the designer paper as we should say. So I think I'm gonna use um, some of my score tape, just like I did on my little um, my little um, journals that I just recently made. I'm gonna add a piece of tape going across so it kind of gives me a good base of where my, my seam binding is going to go. Just try to make it, it's not as even as it needs to be, but it'll work, it'll be fine. So I'm gonna add that in and now I'm going to add some glue so I didn't get my tape totally straight as long as they come out looking about the same we're okay and I like to put extra on the ends okay I've got that on and now I'm just gonna start with one and I'm gonna find my center okay and then I'm just going to kind of start flattening it out. And I'm gonna put that there over this the center. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a little more glue so I can add this other one. Find my center, kind of flatten it out. And there we go. And just kind of give it a good press. If you see any of your edges popping up, add some glue because the edges are important to make sure we get them good and laid down. Okay. 
Now I'm gonna add my piece. I think I'm gonna do this one for the front. I really tried to cut out where I see that beautiful flower and it's gonna go, this is gonna go right here on the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off. I'm gonna add a little extra glue just so I can wiggle it around. I think I think I will go let's see which way I want to put it let me add I didn't put tape in that center and that's where that seam binding is so I'm gonna add the in and now I'm just gonna go ahead and get this laid down some people are waiting until the end to do their cover I kind of get too anxious so and let's see if I can get you in just a little bit closer there. Press this down really nicely. And grab my bone folder and make sure I get this down really nice. The flower is simply gorgeous. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do the back. And I'm gonna grab this paper off. I'm gonna grab my, my glue. Let's see which way I want this one to go. I think I'll put it like this. So I'm adding it on like I did the front one. And there we go. Got our little seam binding all nicely underneath. And now I'm going to add this piece, which is like a typewriter. So you can kind of fold it so you can make sure you got it centered. Peeling off my tape. And adding my glue. And you can do it like this, so it helps you to center it. And there you go. And I'm gonna get this pressed down really nicely. So now I have my cover. The paper is it's delicious, it's so beautiful. Look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna work on my pages and get all my papers cut for the inside and I'll come back and probably show you how to put one page on and then I'm gonna finish up the album. I hope you're enjoying this so far. I sure am. Okay, so I'm working on my pages and I wanted to show you how I'm doing my pages this time. Um, so I've got the outside. Uh, this is the paper I added for the inside. I've already added three pages here and I thought I would show you how I'm adding them this time. So what I did is I took a piece of paper and my paper is 10 by three and three fourths. That's the size of my paper. I scored it at one and five and a half, okay? So what I did now, and this makes it easier than him to slide it over your hinge. I just added my tape, my score tape, along the bottom of my paper. And I don't know if anybody else does it like this. I've never done it like this, but you know what? It worked and it was easy. So now that I've got this, I'm gonna go ahead and peel off my strip of tape or paper here. And I'm going to take it and I'm gonna line it up. And as you see here, you've got where you can add, that, there's your gusset, and you can add your paper right down in here. I'm going to get you a little closer. I want you to see this. Okay, I hope you can see this. So I'm going to line it up with my other pages. And I want to leave about an eighth of an inch just so my page can fold over. And I'm going to line it up with my other pages. I'm going to take the little flap here, or the hinge, and I'm going to take it, I'm going to fold it over, 
I'm going to then fold over this top piece and fold this piece over and voila, I did not have to struggle to get it onto my hinge. And then for this part, I just take some glue and I'm going to add glue all along here and press that down. Wasn't that an easy way to add your page? Look at these now. I've got my four pages. I'm going to go ahead and get them matted. I might um, add a few flips and turns to this. Um, I'm pretty clean and simple when it comes to albums. Y'all know that there are a lot of people out there that make the most beautiful albums. And they do all the little fun stuff. I don't do all that. I do simple and it works for me. So do what works for you and so forth. So I'm going to finish up my pages, do a little decorating, and show you the end result of my album. Okay, before I go any further, I wanted to show you how I'm adding on extra pages. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting myself a piece of paper, four and a half by four and a half, and I scored it at a half an inch. Okay, so you're going to fold it on the half an inch, and I already put one on the front, but I thought I would add one on the back as well. So it's going to add... A little bit extra pages you can always make them where they flip up but I think I'm gonna all just make them all fold the same way and you're just gonna add it on and I'm gonna do that for the other three signatures as well and then I'm just going to add um, my decorative paper on here and I'll come back and show you the end result but I wanted to show you how I'm adding this on so all I'm doing is I'm gonna add it on here and let me grab my let me grab my tape. I'm just going to put this on like this. And then I'm just going to peel my tape. And I like to just try to line it up with my page, going down as much as I can. And you could make your, pa your pages where they are a little bit longer if you want but I liked mine having mine a little bit shorter. So that's what I'm gonna do. So this is how I'm gonna do it. So then I'll have each signature is going to have extra room for photos or journaling or whatever. So I'm gonna finish this up, decorate my pages, and I'll come back and show you all the beautiful end result. Okay, y'all, so I have finished my sweet little album. It turned out just darling. But let me, before I show you the album, let me show you what I've still got left from working with the collection. Okay, so I really used about half of the puppy stickers. I love these and I love the gold. Um, so I used about half of those, so I've got some for another project. I have cracked into the enamel dots. I love Jimmy's, y'all. I used a few of the sequins. I'm gonna use this for a sequin mix. Um, but I used a couple of the flowers in my album. You'll see that in a second. And I did use multiple pieces of the ephemera and the cards and tags. This is what I have left on these. And so this is a lot. A lot comes in these packages. So I have a lot for another project or two or three. So I'm happy to be able to still have some of these in my stash. That way I can work with them on another project. And then lastly, what I have left in the, co the collection is scraps <laughs> and um, a couple, I've got a couple of normal pieces, but I've got a couple of scraps here too and a couple half pieces. So I pretty much used every piece of paper in here. I wanted to make sure I showcased every piece of this beautiful, beautiful paper. I've still got one, two, three whole 12 by 12s left, so that's great. I did crack into some of the, um, to the sticker sheet as well, so you're gonna see that as well. Okay, so let me show you the end result of my sweet album. Okay, so first I added a sweet little bow. This is from the KS Craft um, Angel Wing Bow Die. Um, so I made it in gold, of course. And on the front, of course, you saw how I added the papers already. This would be super cute if you wanted to do some stitching on here. Um, but what I did is I used Lovely out of the puffy stickers. I added a little bit of uh, texture underneath there with a little bit of 
of tulle and I added some gold hearts that were in the collection um, as well. Got a little glue right there. Let me see if I can get that off. Okay, and then on the back, of course, I didn't put anything, but the paper, you don't want to cover it all up. It's simply beautiful. A couple little jimmies up here on the top as well. Okay, so then when you go and you open it up, you have your seam binding, and I added a pocket in the front and a pocket in the back um, of this, and I just love how these little scallop pockets turn out. I added some tags and stuff inside the pockets. This is a butterfly that was part of the ephemera, and I added some enamel dots on the top. Look at how sweet that is. Now you're gonna if you're if you're wondering about this, um, the scallop pocket. It is this right here, and um, the name of the the name of the company that I got it from is Maddie's Crafting Joy. I believe I got this one on Amazon, but it's Maddie's Crafting Joy, and it is this like a little scallop corner pocket that I had in my stash. Okay, so then um, as you know, I made all these pages. I matted them up with the beautiful, beautiful collection, added in some gold pieces and so forth. Some of the stickers, I wanted to try to use everything um, or at least something out of each part of this collection and I have done that. So added in just simple little things here. You can add like a small photo over here, over here and this beautiful paper here, I added some enamel dots, some little jimmies right over the flowers just to give it a little dimension. Now you can make some little photo mats to put in there, or if you want to, you can seal it closed. It's up to you. Adding some more of the ephemera pieces and some more of gold foiling pieces. Got a little, um, this is one of the ephemera pieces and added some little enamel dots. I, love, I, have, a, I have a love for little houses, y'all. I can't help it. And how sweet did this turn out love this i cut this where i made sure i got that butterfly on there use some enamel dots on here as well just love the heart paper i think the flower and the heart paper was my favorite out of this whole collection Ugh, it's just gorgeous love 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 this added um this this is out of the sticker sheet added a little heart above because that is just gorgeous now here's where I used some of the um, sequins. I used them on the flower bouquet and made a small bouquet out of the flowers. And so I thought that was super cute. And as you see, more of the gold. I just love, love, love the gold. And added just, this is out of one of the, I think this was out of the tags and um, cards and tags section and added another page got some just some use some of the scallop sticker sheet added a little flower up here added some flowers on the top you can add photos on the top here and so forth and y'all this has turned out precious and here is the back pocket as well and uh, added some more cards and tags in the back and that is the back. This turned out so cute. The paper is very, very strong and sturdy. Um, I absolutely loved it. And I feel very blessed um, that I was able to work with this collection. And y'all, you need to jump over to Fancy Pants Designs and pick up this collection. You will not be disappointed. Fancy Pants Designs, this is Pink Meadows Collection Kit. Y'all, if anything, at least get the paper. But those puffy stickers were wonderful, just wonderful. And they just stick so nice. I added a little hot glue on the front of these right here just because I wanted to make sure they were good and sturdy. And yeah, this turned out just beautiful, just beautiful. And um, yeah, so anyway, don't forget, if you're interested in this collection, go on over to Fancy Pants Designs. I'll link everything below. And don't forget to use the coupon code CRAFTYCRAFTS10 to get 10% off of your order. Anyway, have a great day. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you made it to the end, let me know. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful evening, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.